what is up everybody welcome back to Mount MoGraph as always my name's Matt and we have an exciting video today uh, it is summit 80 and it's a modern text build uh, but the text build is not the cool part the cool part is uh, hopefully uh, a couple of the little tricks I'm going to show you along the way to kind of critique your work and just make it look cleaner and more professional so let's jump on into it and create a new composition I'm going to go with a nice um, I'm going to switch this actually to 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second with a white background and it's actually only spaced out for one second here so command k to pop up your composition settings set this up to maybe like five seconds and just a little bit more space to work with so let's add some text to the screen here and i'm going to do this uh, i'll just do a couple of words almost literally um, and I'm just going to space this out by hand so we don't have to mess around with splitting up the layer. So I'll duplicate this and duplicate it one more time. And we're going to actually add a period to this uh, end of the sentence. And that's going to kind of help um, some of the cool things in this video. So I'm going to move the anchor points over to the middle just with motion and position my group of words kind of in the middle. I'm not going to worry too much about alignment because we don't really care, uh, at least for this video. So the first thing we're going to use is our audience's imagination to make our animation better. And what that means is kind of using sudden changes in uh, what's happening in your composition to make it seem like there's more happening in your actual animation. So just change your endpoint so it's staggered. Um, and it's going to look really bad to start, but we're going to work through it and hopefully it'll start to make sense and look cool. So we're building up a sense of rhythm and I like to do this when I'm starting my animations because I don't have to mess with keyframes. It's really easy to get different feels and, and start to get a sense of what your animation could potentially be as well as timing. So I like to do this and just kind of let it play a couple times, start seeing if I like even like this base of the animation. So we're gonna start by just uh, adding a position keyframe to this first piece of text here and go back in time a little bit and just pull it up in the air. And so we're just moving a little bit on the Y. And now when we do it, it's gonna look uh, maybe a little bit more interesting and we'll do the same thing and uh, keep building up this animation. So on the words layer, we'll add a little bit of text animation and maybe move it over to the left so it kind of looks like it's squished out from um, the first text when it comes in so duh, duh, duh. perfect um, obviously not yet but uh, we're going to set another keyframe on our period up here and then just move it up in the air maybe above the words so now we have this nice uh, very rough animation and hopefully we are going to work to make this look better so the first trick i like to do uh, once i have this basic animation and maybe basic motion is really add basic keyframes. And what I mean by that is like, add some easing um, coming out of the keyframe, just going into it and maybe make this shorter and move this over so there's a little bit of overlap and also stagger this. So now we'll see um, how this looks more interesting. And you're gonna see that started to build up um, some more character that, to the animation. Sometimes I always like to add easing to everything and I forget like using it sparingly actually can sometimes help your animation quite a bit. So I'm only gonna put it on the in point here. I'll put it on the out point here for some variation. And uh, then we're gonna also work with this period and maybe make this a little bit faster. So since this has an overlap and these are like the words, the period is kind of like the, the end of the sentence. So it's all right to kind of space out. So I'll put this a little bit after the other text and we'll see how that is looking. So da, 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 perfect. Um, and we'll add some easing once again. So as you can see here, this isn't really a complex animation at all, uh, but hopefully we can start to get it looking nice with one more trick. So move this back a touch more and we'll see what this looks like. So we'll play it. So maybe even a little bit quicker, I'm still not loving it. So just real quick, tighten everything up, slide it on over and leave that overlap at the beginning here. And uh, we're doing that so it actually looks like your words are getting squished out by the first section, um, like the motion kind of gets carried through. So there we go, we have that um, happening and that looks kind of nice. So the next thing I like to do is start working with hold keyframes. They're actually among my very favorite keyframes to use and uh, sometimes they don't get enough love. So let's work with them and give them some love. I'm gonna set a keyframe on my scale, copy that and paste it to the beginning of my animation, um, at least for this period that we're working in. I'm gonna zoom in here and you're gonna see that we're gonna, on the scale, change the X property down and change the Y property up. So now we have like this kind of string bean line and I'm just move this over in time and set hold keyframes on that. Um, so you can also right click and go down to keyframe assistant, um, where is it? Keyframe interpolation and then go up to temporal interpolation, click hold if you don't have motion. 
But anyway, so there we go. And now you can see that uh, just by adding those hold keyframes, we added a really interesting character um, to that little animation. You know, and we're not just working with uh, linear keyframes or easing. Now it's like this kind of poppy animation and your eyes are actually just filling in the blanks between. Because as you can see when it plays, you know, like the scale just changes. It's not like there's, that's what a hold keyframes are. They're instant changes. So there we go. Um, I didn't do much at all, but we're going to keep working with this and uh, make it look even better, hopefully. So we have these couple words on the screen, and when I've built an animation, um, once I have my timing down and my rhythm, and, I, and I'm generally happy with how the animation is starting to look, you know, if you don't have someone to critique your work, it can get frustrating, and an easy way to critique it yourself is to drop your composition into another composition. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to actually flop our, or flip our um, composition just on the scale here with the X and I'm going to put that into the negative. So our composition is going to be backwards. Um, so this is what you'll actually see like a lot of illustrators and painters do in Photoshop or whatever the medium is they're working is reverse their layer so they can kind of get a whole new sense of their work and maybe see how it's filling up the space. So when you're watching this, it does feel at least to me like a different animation and I'm able to look at it a little bit more object, um, objectionably. I think that's the wrong word, but I'm able to look at it a little bit better. So um, now I'm able to critique it and I can see there's things I don't like. Um, I feel like the end doesn't have enough character. So I'm going to make that happen a little bit more sudden. So why don't we zoom on in here and just tighten this all up uh, just like that and see if we hop back into our reversed composition, if that looks like a little bit more interesting. So I like to use this trick to um, kind of critique my work or just get, a, I guess, a third party opinion um, from myself uh, by flipping it because I can't read backwards. So there we go, we have a couple words and this looks a little bit better. Um, one of the other tips I like to do when we're working with this modern text, which is pretty much done, is actually switch my frame rate down to really, really low. So we'll switch our frame rate to something like six. And the reason you can do this is then you're able to see uh, kind of like the big hits or, or what what is really happening in your animation and from there be able to kind of judge how it all flows. So luckily this looks pretty good even at this low frame rate, I'm pretty happy with how this is all uh, lining up. It seems like the motion gets carried through pretty well. And um, that looks really nice. So the one thing when I'm playing it at this low frame rate, uh, it doesn't feel, even though they're all like the motions carrying through, um, I don't really think that it feels that interesting. So we're going to do one more trick to make this look a little be bit better. I'm going to switch my frame rate back down to 30. And we're going to hop back into our composition here. And I'm going to put all of these um, or parent all of these to a null. So I'm going to add a null to it and we're going to press P for the position keyframe and we're going to add a keyframe uh, to make this uh, look just a touch more interesting. So I'm going to set a keyframe on the position and then just go back in time and pull this over to the left. So we're going to have a very subtle amount of movement and maybe a little bit of easing to our whole uh, group of text and stuff uh, just when it's starting that might help pull it together so this actually looks terrible because now we have our text going down and our null going over so we're getting this diagonal movement so why don't we tweak this and change our couple words just copy uh, this and copy this keyframe and paste it so we kind of are resetting and I'm gonna actually just pull this over to the left so maybe we won't go down and there we go so now we have our animation and when I go back into oh, I should add easing on that again uh, just like this and then we go back into our composition um, you can start to see that you know I think we did a pretty good job kind of cleaning up our animation and reviewing it and just by tweaking it um, and, and making it look a little bit better altogether. So anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. This was the modern text build and a couple little tricks to kind of critique your work um, and give yourself your own opinion, um, as dumb as that sounds. But thanks for checking out the video and I hope you had fun. I'll catch you later. Peace.